This is BMO. She's a 2010 Suzuki SX4 camper conversion. I've also added a couple things. I've done a two inch lift kit from Rocky Road Outfitters and I put on some bigger tires. I went with 215-75R15 and I wrapped them around some 15 inch by seven inch wide rims that have a negative six millimeter offset. I then added a five millimeter, a positive five millimeter offset to get as close to zero millimeters as I possibly could on the offset. I do have some other modifications that I plan on adding to the vehicle. Plan on removing the front bumper and removing the rear bumper and doing a pre-runner style tube bumper. I'll then install a winch on the front and do a swing arm on the back that allows me to, you know, mount the spare tire and then have a gas can, some water cans, some propane um, on the back of my rig. I'd do some flexible solar panels on the roof box and then I would be adding a snorkel to the front of the vehicle so I can get into some water and not have to worry, as well as adding an awning to the side of the rack. With that being said, you know, the, the biggest reason I made this conversion to this vehicle is because I plan on taking the vehicle on the Pan American Highway and driving from Washington State to Ushuaia, Argentina. This is something I've kind of envisioned myself doing maybe in the later part of my life. You know, I just turned 30. I envisioned this being something I maybe did in my 60s or after retirement. But in the wake of COVID-19 and 2020, a lot has transitioned in a lot of people's lives and mine included. And the idea of losing my job, transitioning into maybe finding a whole new career path, as well as you know being single, having no children, I'm looking at this time in my life and this time in history as potentially an opportunity to go experience something I've always wanted to do, something that I, I really didn't know if I'd actually get the opportunity to, but why not do it now? You know, I kind of got sparked the, by the idea during the pandemic and, you know, bored, sitting around, watching YouTube videos, and I decided to start searching. And I came across uh, a couple really incredible channels that were really insp inspirational and really kind of kicked the whole thing into gear for me. You know, one of the biggest channels that I got incredibly inspired by was this incredible young guy from the UK. His he goes he uses the channel name Combi Life. Ben, who is the driver, decided to drive from South America north to Alaska. The adventure's all documented on YouTube. It's incredibly beautiful. I'll link his channel in the description below so that you can follow it if you'd like to, but but Ben said something on his Pan American journey that really, really inspired me. And his biggest piece of advice was don't, don't get stuck in the planning and don't let what you have hold you back. What you have is exactly what you need. Don't let not having the right vehicle hold you back. Don't let not having maybe enough money hold you back. You know, Ben's biggest vision through this whole thing was to do it as cheap as he possibly could. And he tried to prove that anybody could drive the Pan American Highway for $10 a day. And it's quite a journey. He went through lots of ups and downs. But when he said, you know, don't let anything hold you back and specifically don't let your vehicle hold you back, that inspired me because I am the proud owner of this amazing Suzuki SX4. I've always wanted one. But was it the right vehicle to drive the Pan American Highway? Was it the right vehicle to potentially live out of for two, maybe three years? Who knows? That then geared my, my idea of, okay, maybe I could do this. Well, is there anybody out there who's maybe converted their Suzuki into a camper? Is there anybody that maybe has laid the groundwork for me? What I did actually come across was this young man who has a channel out of Brazil and it's M Minamoto and I, I might be butching that I'm not sure but I'll definitely link his description below his channel in the description below because he did convert his Suzuki SX4 into a camper conversion and I was completely blown away you know I I wasn't quite sure if there was enough room you know what was the, what did it all entail you know was it better to just maybe do a rooftop tent but after seeing M Minamoto's 
design and his layout for his Suzuki, it really inspired me. And I was like, you know what? This is actually possible. This is completely doable. Like, I could actually do this in my car. You know, I love this car. It's taken me everywhere. It goes all the places the big rig can go. Uh, you know, I grow, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, if you can't tell. But the Subaru is the, the king of the road out here. You know, the iconic car for the Northwest. And to see this little car go everywhere the Subaru can go, I know this thing's unstoppable. And I want to kind of prove it to myself and, and like kind of push myself in a way that maybe I didn't think I was capable of living in such a small thing. I finally just decided, you know, this is the trip for me. The Pan American Highway is something that I want to do. And I made the decision in the winter, like maybe October, November of 2020. And I decided that in fall of 2021, I will be departing from Washington State to Ushuaia, Argentina with my Suzuki SX4 camper conversion. If this is something that is inspiring to you or even somewhat, you know, fun or interesting in any way, like I encourage you to like, follow. I plan on documenting the whole trip and I plan on sharing my experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly with, with everybody here on YouTube. With all that being said, let's get right to the tour and I'll show you what is actually going on in the back of this car. At the moment, BMO only has three modes. I'm sure I'll get more as I get on the trip and I'll experience more things that BMO can actually do. But at the moment, she only has three modes. And the three modes are what I like to call driving mode. Then we have work mode or one person sleeper mode. And then we have full sleeper mode or a two person sleeper mode. Basically driver mode is, you know, your standard driving. I have the pads that are on are for the extensions that go in place when the seats are completely slid forward for sleep mode they just kind of sit here and rest in place and in driver mode both seats are in the normal driving position you can throw what you need in the back i have the roof rack on top i have the yakima box as well and that allows me to keep a lot of stuff up top as well as storage below work mode or single sleeper mode consists of either the driver's seat being pushed forward into a locked position or vice versa the passenger seat just being pushed forward into a locked position with the way i designed the bed frame or the way that i kind of thought about it is that i wanted to have the ability to maybe sit in the passenger seat and do some computer work or you know potentially edit videos or at least have a place to know sit down outside of being outside the car in a chair or in a camping chair or something like that. I can then also do that vice versa to where maybe the driver's seat is into a driving position and the passenger seat is pushed forward. And then there's a sleeping space for one person. You know, it's a little bit wider than the width of, of my shoulders, plenty of room for myself to lay down flat in the back. And then I could potentially, you know, move my vehicle if I need to or drive to a different location. Full sleeper mode is basically what it sounds like. Um, both seats would be pushed forward into the locked position. The extensions for the bed frame would be flipped out. And that would allow, you know, plenty of room for one person. I have way more than enough room. I have about five foot 10 inches to five foot 11 inches of flat space that I can lay down. And there's plenty of room for another person to lay next to me if they needed to. That's really nice, you know, it may not be the optimal amount of space, but I'm only about 5'10", and my feet do touch the end of the hatch when I am laying completely flat, but I don't sleep like a plank, and I don't really know anybody that does. I kind of bend my knees a little bit, and I sleep on my side, so I'm incredibly comfortable, you know. I sleep, honestly, better in the back of my Suzuki than I actually do in my bed at home. The frame itself is built out of standard plywood, three quarter inch plywood. Um, you know, I went with something that was as light as I could that would be durable. Um, I didn't actually put any sealant or anything on it and I may regret that in the future, but I'm kind of honestly just rolling with it. We'll just see what happens. 
it is pretty lightweight for what it is you know i did remove all of the back seats um went all the way down to the floor of the actual car to the frame to the metal and i took out the spare tire in the rear and then what we actually did was we built two separate frames and installed those individually we started with the back area where the spare tire was and we built the floor and then we built some walls and we built the box on top of that I gave myself maybe about six to eight inches of space to store and we dropped that into the rear fit it nice and flush to the floor got it pretty solid in there and then what we did with the front section because there was a seat rail on the actual frame of the vehicle where I removed the seats we used that to notch some uh, notches into the plywood to create a locking point and use the pressure and um, screwed the front portion or the front half of the frame into the back box that we built and then I didn't actually put flooring in the frame on the front part we left that open because of the flooring and the way the rail worked I didn't want to have to completely encompass the box I felt it wasn't necessarily gonna be a big issue uh, like I said prior, I plan on adding solar, so I'm kind of hoping maybe I can get the battery and some of the solar components stored in that spare tire area. If not, you know, it'll be good storage for some stuff, some, some kind of hide a spot, but there is actually a storage space on top of the access port to the spare tire, which allows me to throw a bunch of stuff back there. I do eventually plan on covering it in carpet, and I do feel that that will help add a little bit of cushion as well as a little bit of safety um and the aspect of the wood maybe getting wet or you know sweat or um humidity when i'm in the south i am currently only using three inch upholstery foam and it's your typical upholstery upholstery foam that you would get at your local hardware store uh or online anywhere i think they were two foot by six foot sheets of three inch upholstery foam and um you know i got those and then i wrapped them in a really fun retro arcades throwback 90s vibe uh fabric that i helped i paid my friend to sew the covers for all the covers are removable i wanted to have the ability to wash them or or have the opportunity to hopefully replace just the the foaming and not the actual fabric but i did cut them into four different sections uh, that allows me to, you know, set up in the three different modes, have one side set up, have both sides set up, as well as have the pads removable in case I wanted to use them for other things. I really didn't want to have one big piece of foam that I rolled up and rolled out. I felt that I would do a little bit better off with being able to throw the pads around and flip the whole thing out and move it around and not have to wrestle with a big piece of foam. So that's ultimately why I just picked the upholstery foam and cut them into the shapes that I did. I I feel it's very comfortable. It is only three inches, but I think with the addition of the carpet, I'm going to sleep better than I do anywhere else because I honestly already do. The setup and teardown is incredibly easy. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was trying to make it as easy on myself as possible. And I know some of you will probably see this and say, oh, well, you could have done this and you could have done that. And, you know, honestly, I went with the resource. I went with like what I knew and what I could do. I didn't want to overdo it. I didn't want to push myself to spend a bunch of money and, and make big mistakes. So I went with what I knew I could do. And with the help of my brother-in-law, we were able to come up with something that I feel is really easy to set up. You know, it takes a minute, maybe two minutes if you're really taking your time and you're throwing stuff around in the back. But it's really fast. You know, it only takes a minute, two minutes to set up, um, you know, into, into any one of the modes. It's really quick. It's easy. Uh, I'm really happy with the design. I'm sure there's stuff that along the way I'll maybe add modifications or do stuff, but that was the whole point in building this in wood and building it myself is that I wanted to have the ability to make modifications along the way in case anything comes up and I'm just like, wow, that was a horrible idea. And who knows? I'm sure I'll come across plenty of those in the process of this build. The window shades that I use to block out the light and create some insulation for the vehicle is I use some Reflectix. You know, I got, on, I got on YouTube and I searched, you know, what are all these van lives, what are the van people doing to help 
keep their vehicle cool and keep out the light um, and maybe even possibly keep the heat in and one of the really awesome ideas I saw was your just typical Reflectix. You know, I bought a big roll at the local hardware store and uh, it was a little bit of a challenge to wrestle it into the windows and get them, get them to the right cut. I made a few mistakes, but after trial and error, I came out with some window shades that are great. You know, they block out all the light, they, ref they uh, keep in the heat, they keep out the cold so far. Um, I've been really impressed with the way they work. You know, they aren't necessarily the most beautiful things on the inside to look at, but what I do plan on doing is getting some fun fabric and adding it to the front, gluing it to the front, allowing the atmosphere and the vibe inside the vehicle to stay just as fresh as the arcade, fa arcade fabric. Well, that's pretty much all I have for now. You know, this is a great little vehicle. It's something I've always really wanted and to finally have something that I can sleep in the back of and potentially take on this adventure. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to share that with you. If you have any questions about the process, I didn't necessarily record anything or keep track of anything, but I have a good idea and I would love to be as helpful as I possibly can. So feel free to leave a comment below. It really helps with the interaction. And, and while you're doing that, if you like the video and you're interested in the journey, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, and maybe slap the bell to stay up to date. You know, this is an adventure that I'm really excited for and I'm excited to share with you on YouTube. So, you know, join in, see what BMO and I get into. And thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you again next time.